Yeah. All right. Hi, everybody. So this is not the Drupal and Virtual Mint presentation that you sign up for. This is now called Using Virtual Mint. This is a little bit more general than just Drupal. It is very useful for our company, which is a Drupal shop in Los Angeles and Boston. Uh, but we we um, we've ended up using Virtual Mint for everything, for Ruby sites to Django sites to WordPress sites to Drupal sites. So this is a little bit more general than just Drupal and Virtual Mint. And so thank you for coming. Um, so uh, my name is Chris Stefano. I'm a longtime user of Drupal. I've been using it off and on for 10 years. And you can follow me on Twitter at Chris Stefano if you'd like. Uh, also, if you have any questions, you can shoot me questions later. Uh, I'm not paying attention to that Twitter feed right now. I don't have that fancy slide rocket technology that uh, shows the Twitter feed live on my presentation slides. But I considered it. Exaltation of Larks is our Drupal shop. We have Drupal training, consulting, and development. And almost everyone is in Southern California at this point. And that's where we have our base of operations. I'm one of the organizers in LA Drupal. And that's the user group that put on this conference. Need I say more? No? OK. And you can follow LA Drupal. I'm one of the guys that, that posts Twitters on there. And Drop Labs is a new co-working and event space for the Drupal community in downtown Los Angeles. And that's our, our newest project. It's one of the things that I love doing the most. It's also incredibly easy because it's just like having an office. But you get to share it with friends and, and have client meetings and everything like that. We just had a co-working buff yesterday. Uh, we didn't record it, but if anyone has, has questions about co-working in Drupal, and places in Los Angeles or around the area to, to work in a Drupal-friendly environment, uh, just let me know. So is anyone here already using Drupalman? Dr uh, I mean WebPull or uh, Virtualman? Anyone using Virtualman? Is anyone using Plesk or cPanel? OK, I see a couple of hands. So is anyone using a control panel other than these? OK, great. Then, then you, are, you are further along than, than everyone around you. So Webmin is, is a control panel that manages the entire server. And Virtualmin is a plugin for it. I'm not going to go into Webmin. Webmin is a, a, a long time open source project. It's been going strong for 12 or 13 years. But I'm not going to be giving a demonstration of Webmin, just a virtual min. Virtual min um, turns, turns uh, Webmin into a Hydra. So you can all of a sudden have multiple uh, websites running on a Webmin maintained server. Um, and I'll go into that later. So virtual min is free. It's open source. Unlike other proprietary control panels, there's no monthly fee. There's no one-time fee. It's great. It's free, open source. It's written in Perl. And it is also uh, just like another control panel. So if you're used to logging in on a special port over SSL, you can create mail accounts. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Virtualman can do the same thing. Hey, everybody. It's easy to install. I'll uh, give you a link later where you can go and download the install script and run it. And it asks you one question. Would you like to install Virtualman? <laughs> and then it does it. OK, yeah. We will have a Q&A uh, part later. So there's a, uh, it's a modular architecture. It's pretty cool. It's like Drupal. You can install plugins. You can deactivate plugins. It is actually very similar in, in philosophy to Drupal. It's turnkey. So once you install it, you can be using it right away. You don't have to activate it. You don't have to wait for your activation or something like that. But like, well, it's turnkey. It, you, once you install it, you're, you're good to go. It has a great security record. Uh, and this is true also for Webman. Uh, Webman uh, had a few security uh, 
issues in the distant past, but in the last couple of years and also in uh, the recent history for Virtualman. Security updates are coming out all the time. Everything goes over SSL. It uses self-signed certificates by default, so it doesn't let you even try to use Virtualman without SSL. It'll just generate an SSL certificate for you right away. Also, it prevents uh, cross-site request forgeries, and uh, which is kind of annoying, so you can't actually submit forms and stuff into new windows or new tabs because it expects everything to happen in the same window. And you can deactivate that. So uh, by default, it has great security, which you can turn off piece by piece. And there are both pro and free versions. So there is a pro version. It's uh, maybe one third the cost compared to the closest competitor. And uh, I'm not going to be going very much into the pro version, but it is available in case you wanted premium support or uh, features that are in pro that aren't in the free GPL version. And it's got excellent support. So I've been using Virtualman now for probably four years, and I have I have I've experienced both being a pro user and also a GPL user. And when I go to the help desk and I I file a bug report or I have a question like I I don't know how to do this, I've noticed that the response time is the same. Whether I'm reporting for a GPL issue or a pro issue, and it it's great. It's, I get my my responses within 24 hours, and every single problem, every single one, has been fixed. Can you wait till the end? Yes. So there's a great sysadmin community on IRC, and also on the forums. And if you go to virtualmin.com, it's a uh, it's a Drupal site. Used to be Joomla. Now it's much, much better. It uses the project and project issue modules, so you can actually use the site very much like you would use Drupal and Drupal.org. So they're also friends of LA Drupal. As I said, uh, a couple of the sites that I maintain or the servers that I, that I maintain are running pro. Uh, Virtualman has uh, given LA Drupal a pro license so that we can we can uh, experiment and play with the other the other features that are in the pro version. I will um, I'll give a demo of that later. So so I guess the question is uh, after saying why why use Virtualman why not well what are the reasons to not use Virtualman well it's kind of scary right because it's free right it's it's open source so anyone can see the code you know we've all heard this before right it's also not Plesk or or cPanel. I'm used to using cPanel, right? So, so why would I want to use Virtualman? You have to install it. That might be a problem, and you have to update it, which might be a problem, but we're at a Drupal camp, and Virtualman is a lot like Drupal. You have to install it, you have to update it, you have to maintain it. It's not like a proprietary alternative. It's, it's open source. So. That's all I could think of when I was doing the slide. I, I couldn't think of any other reason not to use Virtualman. Okay, there is one more reason, and that is a lot of people don't trust control panels because they're used to going in and editing the files directly on the command line, and they've had bad experiences where cPanel or some other control panel blows away completely any work they've done just by loading the cont files from some cache and just... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, Virtualman is very, very good at respecting any changes that it didn't actually make. It reads from those conf files and writes to those conf files, and it might have its own syntax, or it puts the Apache directives in its particular order. But if there's something in there, it will respect it, and it will not overwrite it. Can you wait till the end? Will it notify you about the conflict if it tries to overwrite something? I have not ever seen that. So, so yeah, it will detect whether you've already added directives that it is trying to add, and it will update those. So it is possible to say, all right, so if I add a, I don't know, an add type directive or something in, in one of the comp files, and it sees that I have that type already added, but now there's a difference, it will overwrite what's there. That is a good question. I've never added any add type 
Uh, well, I've never added any directives through Virtualman, although it is possible. So you still edit files. What it does is it gives you a text area which loads the content of that configuration file in the web UI. So, you're looking right so it's basically a text editor right there. Yeah. So uh, here's here, here's what is in the anatomy of Virtualman. So Virtualman is just a Perl control panel. It's kind of an abstraction layer on top of all the other servers you have, including Apache. So you can configure your Apache configuration files. You can configure your MySQL and Postgres configuration. It also has uh, support for PHP. Uh, but this does. This is very. It's, I need to be very clear that Virtualman sits on top of everything that's already on your server. There's an installer that will install everything for you if you want, including all these things in this list. But if you're installing Apache uh, 2.1 or you're, you're installing PHP 5.2, Virtual Min will deal with that just fine. It, it, it will read your configuration as you have it, depending on what, what server OS you have. So it also includes Subversion and Git. It gives you some stats for your websites. It doesn't use SendMail, thank God. It also has Clam AV and some, some uh, s spam handling here. And there are install scripts. You can install phpMyAdmin. I misspelled Django. It has full support for Ruby. Uh, you can actually use the install scripts to, to do... You can even install Drupal if you want. There are probably more features. Um, wait, that's the GPL version. Okay, so here's a Virtualman Pro version. I apologize. So this is this is what's in the Pro version. The install scripts that I just mentioned are are actually um, a Pro version. You can install different things, whether it's Redmine or or Drupal or or Plone um, Project or Open Project. Anyone use that? So it has something like 80 different packages that I can install for you. Pretty cool. And this can be on a per site basis. So you can spin up a subdomain or a new domain on your server and have it completely quarantined using the best we have in Linux security, like SueExec and SueOshin and, and uh, uh, FCGID so that all of the Apache processes run under a certain user instead of the main Apache process. So uh, that's, that's here in Pro. You can do things like um, get 24-hour-a-day support. But I've noticed that, too, with the GPL version. Okay. And uh, backups to S3. I don't know why that's in the, in, the, uh, in the Pro version. I don't happen to use that anymore. And people have since posted in the, in the virtual and forums how to do that with a, with a free GPL version. So it seems kind of like a, an arbitrary decision at this point. Uh, maybe back in the day it was a nice perk, but, but now it's, it's something that a lot of people will want to do. Yeah, Virtualman GPL has been hacked in a good way. So uh, also slave DNS support. This is a really big deal. So if you have, you, if you have a server and it goes down and that server is, is running your mail, you don't get mail. That's a problem. Your server goes back up. That mail may not be coming. Yeah, because the originating server might stop trying to send it after a certain period. It's like, oh, well, that server is just not there anymore. So Virtualman Pro has support for something called Slave DNS, where you can delegate another DNS server, another mail server somewhere else, preferably in a different zip code, to handle your mail in case the, the mail server goes down on your primary server. And what's really cool is that you can do this with more than one server. So if you have a Virtualman Pro server over here, a Virtualman Pro server over here, they can each use each other as slave DNS servers, so your mail is always delivered. Is that for mail? There are other uses for slave DNS. Is it, is it suitable for mail? Yes. Oh, yes. Question, so the question oh, is, yeah. the question is, uh, can, can this be used for other things, or is this just for mail? And slave DNS is in my experience, primarily used for mail. Um, yeah, I, I can't really think of anything else that it would be used for. But yes, any other type of, of client server uh, service that you would need to have running all the time, this would be good for. 
So uh, I, I don't actually know uh, all of the things that are in Virtual Win Pro. Um, I put everything here on one slide instead of stepping through it because I thought it would be fast. Okay. So let's do a demo. We're going to go ahead and uh, do a demo. So this is the the uh, the virtual min instance on LADrupal.org. This is a server called Muscle Beach. Uh, we talked with um, with Softlayer, our hosting sponsor, at a conference, and we said, you know, we really want to use Softlayer, but you guys have all these problems. And they're like, oh, well, we just fix those problems. You want to try us for free? And it, it was kind of like that. It wasn't exactly like that. And We've been hosting on software for quite a while, and we've been very, very happy with them. Uh, and uh, the level of, of support and the level of, of power that they gave us, they gave us about double what we asked for. So our server is really brawny, hence the name Muscle Beach. So can everybody see this all right? And let's hide that. There we go. So here is... How's that? Okay, so I'm going to log out. And the first time you ever come to your virtual min instance, it's going to be on port 10,000, which you can change. But you need to know that now in case you work in an office environment or you know you, you use some kind of wireless router that does this port blocking. You know, 10,000 is very important. And you log in usually with root, but you can set up users and permissions and roles just like you can with Drupal. And so here are the sites that are running here on the LA Drupal server. And this is virtualmin. Virtualmin is, is all here on the left-hand side. There's also webmin. Webmin gives you access to all your servers and stuff here. I'm not going to go very much into all that, but here, here are your cron jobs. And here is your FTP server, which actually uh, we don't use um, using Pro FTPD. Uh, here is your OpenSSH server. So these are all the things that that you might ha have you might already have running on your server, but it's it's um, server wide. So all these things are servers that that run on your on your machine that that. Um, that have nothing to do with individual mail accounts, have nothing to do with individual databases. These are just the overall processes and pages for managing them. So here's your subversion repository. Uh, we don't use SVN anymore, but we still have this for legacy support. Uh, we have the spam assassin configuration. So these are all things in Webmin. And Webmin, so Webmin is more, more analogous to WHM, if anyone has used that. WHM is uh, the old, it, it's, it's the parent interface to cPanel. cPanel is like, a, you can uh, spawn little children accounts in WHM. So I'm not sure if that makes any sense. But uh, those, are, those are two separate uh, offerings and you can use them together. Well, just as you can here, Webmin and Virtualmin can be used together. Uh, one for s very specific sites and specific email addresses and specific databases and you can basically sandbox those servers and let that server owner log in and do things but not affect the other servers and the other accounts, the other domains. And again here are the individual ones. So we have DrupalCampLA.com, LADrupal.org, and we have Drupal Design Camp LA on DDCLA.org. So here uh, the this, the basic hierarchy is you have parent servers, or what, what Virtualmin calls a virtual servers, which is a, a strange name uh, from anyone coming from uh, Plesk or cPanel. But they're called virtual servers. And then here are what are called subservers. And subservers sub are their own sites. They get their own databases, their own mail accounts, everything. They get their own stats. They get everything that you would expect an account having. But the difference is, uh, as a subserver, it's actually using the same uh, database username and passwords, using the same SSH username and password. So you can log in here to the ddcla.org site as the ddcla user, and you have full access to all of the domains that, that are 
sub-servers. And if there's interest, I can go and show what that looks like in the terminal. So DrupalCampLA.com has a, a completely empty site right here. This is completely empty. So we have uh, a web server. We have a server running over SSL. We have DAV authentication in case we want to use um, the Git support, the PHP 5 configuration, and so on. So here, if I clicked on Preview Website, it would actually redirect me to, to, to this year's conference site. There's nothing here. It's just a .hd access that redirects to the current year's conference. And so these, again, are subservers. And finally, ladrupal.org. Uh, we don't actually use uh, Sugar CRM anymore. Uh, code is where our Git repository is. Dev is our, our www.ladrupal.org dev site. Here's our, our internet where we, we can talk about planning and saving our saving assets for uh, the conference swag and and um, uh, conference venue information and uh, sponsor liaison information so that's that's where all that stuff is so all of these sites can be logged into uh, right here in virtualbin so if I had logged in as LA Drupal and if I remember the LA Drupal password, I could actually log in, and I would only see ladrupal.org and those subservers. If you, uh, is it possible to give out a subserver log so that you will only see the subserver? I don't think so. The question is, can you can you give out a subserver login so that only someone can log in for that subserver? And I, I don't think that's possible. What you can do is so so here here's the process of creating one. Uh, yes, Michael. It is. Yes. Okay. Down here? Yes. Ah yes. So the question was, can a can a, uh, a subserver can subserver access be given out without being uh, given access to the parent server? So in this case, 2011.drupalcampla.com, but not drupalcampla.com. And uh, you were saying that that is possible by adding a mail and FTP user. This is also uh, slightly erroneously called uh, mail and FTP. This also includes SSH, and it. We don't use FTP, so it still says FTP. Um, it's a little bit confusing. So if you add a user here, you can uh, give them other permissions, uh, like database access. And, and it looks like it will, yeah. So thank you, Michael. And I'm just so used to using one one user account to administer everything. Sysadmin bias. Sorry. <laughs> yes, the question is, are these are these user accounts jailed when they log in via SSH? And, and they are. Okay. <laughs> so here are the basic settings for creating a new account. So if I wanted to add, um, well, I'll show you. I'll show you uh, an example, a real live example. So here on DrupalCampLA.com, we have the main DrupalCampLA.com uh, user account called DrupalCampLA, and this was automatically generated based on the domain. So I typed in DrupalCampLA.com, and it said, "Oh, it might be a good idea to use." Drupal Camp LA is a username. This is great unless you do those domain hacking things like delicious for your domains. It'll be it, it'll just call this ICIO. Actually, it'll just be, it'll be called ICIO if I typed in delicious in here. So uh, there's a way to override that, and there are a bunch of aliases for Drupal Camp LA, and we have. 
Um, well, that's using my old email address. So here, anyone who emails camp at drupalcampla.com will get an auto reply saying, hey, uh, you just sent an email to us and uh, give us a little time to respond to you, and it will forward that email to these folks, um, the camp organizers from this year and years past. And it's pretty straightforward. It's a control panel. It, uh, some of the some of the language is a little bit different compared to Plesk and compared to cPanel and ISP Config and other other control panels. DreamHost has their own con uh, proprietary control panel, but uh, this is pretty straightforward. And there is an IRC channel you can jump into and ask questions. There is a discussion forum. Virtualmin.com has pretty good documentation, and there are other things you can do as well. Um, but this might be a good time to, to ask if anyone has any questions. Any, any new questions? Yeah, Matt. So I, I provide hosting for some of my web development clients, mm -hmm. and there's like a cost associated with that, I guess, on a yearly basis. Can I integrate that with this, or do I have to do my bookkeeping separately and, and then manually update their the hosting setups? That's a really good question. So you manage servers. And those servers are, uh, you have clients on those servers. Printed from me, yeah, on a yearly basis, let's say. Right, right. And so is this one, one large server that you have shared accounts on? Or is this multiple servers and each client gets each server? It's, uh, it's my own VPS. Mm -hmm. And I subdivide it into, you know, I do virtual hosting for the different servers. And I would like to be able to give them SSH access and email mm -hmm. addresses and things like this, mm -hmm. rather than using Google Apps or something. Um, and so could I, could I have them sign up through some kind of add-on module using WebMin or VirtualMin rather than doing that through my separate building? There probably is a way. Yeah. I don't do it that way, so I haven't looked into it. But the, it is entirely possible to have different plans in here. So uh, where is that exactly? Michael, maybe you, you remember where it is. It's under... Uh, fee, uh, server account, account plans. There it is. So, ladrupal.org and drupalcampla.com. You know, we don't have plans. Every single server, I should say, virtual server that we have set up, whether it's ddcla.org or drupalcampla.com, we give them unlimited quotas and unlimited bandwidth. And that's really because we have a great relationship with software. And here you okay. So let's see what happens if we create a new plan. Okay, M rather plan. There we go. And so you 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 get two hundred and fifty megabytes because you're special. And don't go, don't go crazy. <laughs> I said special. And uh, so let's use this uh, unlimited unlimited. So the server administrator gets gets uh, lots of good stuff. Why, why don't we switch this over here? Yeah, so you can create all kinds of plans. Um, some of these are a little bit scary. So renaming domains can can make uh, pretty significant changes. Um, I wouldn't give this feature to a lot of people. It'll it'll change all kinds of things, like even the Linux user that it creates in slash home. So I would say no. And um, at most, you get one mongrel instance and server aliases, five. This is looking more and more like shared hosting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can do your own. My, my point is you can do your own shared hosting. Exactly. All in here without having to go out to a different system. Exactly. That's great. I don't know if it does billing. That is something that I don't know. There's, there's undoubtedly a plugin that you can install if you go to... In this case, I, I think it's actually webmin.com. If you go to webmin.com, there's a third-party plugins listing of a couple hundred different things. There are things there like, like I want to I want to manage my my um, the, some some unusual type of server like um, like Lighty. There's a Lighty plugin. It looks like there is. It's the virtual server. Oh, sure. Oh, you're getting it. So you said for Virtual and Pro there is an option for this? Uh, I'm just looking at some threads here that, that they're discussing. 
discussing it, yes. So for billing. For billing. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's something that's plugged into the as well. All right. Yes, Michael. So, so this would be so if I'm the sysadmin, and and Matt is the is the sales guy, and a customer who does sales for his customers, then this is where I would go to create a reseller account for Matt. Yes, you're my affiliate. This is the pro version. Yes, and I can also go into a GPL version that we have, uh, but it's, it's, um, yes, I should do that, shouldn't I? Well, I mean, I want to take it. <laughs> You're doing a great job of it. All right. So we can just switch back and forth between the, the two different, um, the two different versions, mm -hmm. GPL and Pro. And apparently, I don't know my password. Hmm. I use a password generator for everything, and so I only know my master password. I use one called Super Gen Pass, and it's a, a, a browser agnostic. It's a, it's a bookmark like written in JavaScript. And it, it's fantastic. Uh, I can talk with you later about it if you'd like. So, uh huh? Didn't match. Okay, so I can at least log in now. I think what happened was that I haven't created a. Uh, uh, Christo uh, subuser on this account yet on the, on this uh, virtual min instance. So I'm going to log in as root, and I'm going to show you in a minute how cool this is, and I'll show you in a minute how bad this is. So here, here um, looks like we have some updates, kind of like the Drupal uh, status report uh, showing available updates. I can actually uh, update this in the background if I want. The uh, uh, it will actually give me a printout in the page of its progress, but it's identical to running apt-get on, on an Ubuntu or, or Debian system. And uh, if I was using Gen2, then I would see yum. If I was using something else, I'd see the other package manager specific to that server OS. In this case, this is a Debian server. And it actually says so somewhere. Yes. Yes. Status right there. And so here I can, and again, this is the GPL free version. So this is what you would get out of the box within five minutes of installing it. You would just log in. It would say, oh, hey, this is a new instance. Let me check my configuration. And it would check it. And that is under here. So this is the, 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 the config check that it would run. And it would say, hey, your system is now ready for use. And then it refreshes and, and you're good to go. So that's, that's what happens when you install it. If it notices that something's wrong, like your DNS server is installed, but it's not pointing to itself for certain tasks, it'll be like, um, you need to update your DNS settings to add your DNS server IP address to your DNS server IP address. And it'll give you a link, and then you can just update the setting. It's great. And so where were we? The status report here. And I got to this page just by, by uh, or just reloading, just reloading here, and so I can shut down my Pro FTP, uh, Pro FTPD server, and now that's not running anymore, which is fine by me. And I can start it up again, and you can see how much storage the different virtual servers are using. So we have one here called Graviton. Uh, that's not using anything. That's just uh, a shell name. I, I I dislike the names of really cool particles for my servers. And then we have uh, Larks.la. That's the exaltation of Larks website. So apparently we're using quite a bit of storage. And
and we have a 10 gigabyte limit. So I'm going to go in here and I'm like, oh, I should probably raise that or lower that. So does anyone know how to do that based on what you've seen so far? <laughs> exactly. It, it, it is that simple. So I'm going to go and uh, click, click on this thing and then uh, click the submit button and that's it. So I selected Larks.LA. I'm editing this virtual server and here under quotas and limits I'm going to make that unlimited and save it. And that's it. That was pretty fast. And it doesn't say that it's, it's, it's done once. It says it's done several times. Uh, it's only when it says reloading virtual min that you actually know that it's done. So welcome to open source. Welcome to, uh, to a little bit of a lack of polish and, and, and usability. But after using this for a couple minutes or a couple years, you're, you're going to get it. Definitely. Your experience will, will be somewhere in that spectrum. And uh, so, and you can. Yeah, so this is actually the, the most minimal theme there is. And I think they're actually called themes. They're called Webman themes. And this one works just fine for me. I don't need icons everywhere. I don't need... Compared to using this as my blessings, this is like breath of fresh air. Yes. Yeah, so the comment was, compared to Plesk, this is a breath of fresh air. We're going to copyright that. <laughs> yes? Um, just maybe a, a, something that maybe has been added to the virtual you know, I, I, My servers are set up with an FCGI. Yes. So that's, that's one of the things. Uh, so the, the comment is, in virtual man GPL, you have your server set up with FCGID. Yeah, it does that. Then, is there are there like additional features in Pro around that or something? Uh, no, there are no additional features in Pro around FCGID, as far as I know. However, that's one of those things that was always meant to go into the GPL version, and it may have gone in. It may, it may have gone in by now. It just configures it like that by default. That's great. Did it used to use Greenpoint. It used Mod PHP. Yeah. So virtual min GPL used to use mod PHP, and I don't know if if uh, this is still the case, but in the virtual min Pro version, you can switch in between them. So yeah, here, you can, you, can, you can do that in the yeah, free version. You can choose. You can choose how your PHP is set up. Well, that, that's, that's great. The the that's great. So that's actually the number one reason why I upgraded to Pro in the first place. <laughs> yeah, the script installers, however are useful. I thought, oh, I'll never use those. I can install Drupal. I know how to install other things. And then I tried installing Redmine. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of success installing Redmine manually. And I learned a lot. And I'm still standing here before you. So here is uh, the, the GPL version again. It's showing me the updates. I can install them if I want. Uh, here it shows some basic information. Uh, the number of mail aliases, the number of FTP accounts, and that kind of thing. This is very useful. This shows the IP addresses that are being used on your server just right here, right on the main page. And on a server like, let's see, on Neutrino, ah, see, it will not let me connect via HTTP. I have to connect via HTTPS, which is good. What's bad is the feedback. <laughs> the feedback is a little rough. So uh, that can also be changed, I'm sure. So I'm going to log into another, another uh, virtual min maintained or virtual min managed server. And so here are, and this is very, a very similar setup. This is GPL Pro, but you got a ton of sites. This, this can run dozens, hundreds, probably thousands of accounts. And the only limit is your mental faculties and the available resources on the server, just like any shared host. One of those is, one of those is, one of those is going to uh, collapse first <laughs> before the other. Right. So we have um, a whole bunch of other settings uh, and, and options. And this is one of the, I, I'll answer your question in just a sec. This is the thing that is is kind of like, wow, how
how come this isn't available in something else? Uh, scheduled backups. Let's go to a site that actually has scheduled backups. So here, on the this is the LA Drupal server. We have a um, we have two different tasks, two different backup tasks that run on a regular basis. So this one will back up just the MySQL databases for all the sites every hour. Every hour on the hour. And this is what that looks like. So all the virtual servers are being backed up, but only the MySQL databases are being backed up. And that's just a holdover from something else. And then this is where it saves it to and uses string replacement so that everything is timestamped. So we have a, uh, if you notice here, we, we actually have a Dropbox installed on the server. So all the stuff that gets saved in our backups directory replicates to the cloud. For those that are listening at home, I'm putting the cloud in air quotes. And it's great. That means that I can log in via the Dropbox web UI somewhere else and I can grab a database backup. Easy. If someone just blew away what I just did on the internet, which happened last year, I can just roll back to a, to la the last hour's backup, and it's very easy to do. Uh, so this this is um, this took a little bit of thinking. Like, so what is the the right time format that I want to use? And uh, geez, the, like, this is the hardest part of setting up this this entire thing. Everything else is point and click. Time, time for analysis yes, time format analysis paralysis. Got trademarked that. And then, uh, so if, oh, darn. All right, I'll, I'll license it from you. So here, uh, this is an email alias. So this will forward to uh, all of our system administrators and uh, organizers who have opted in to be notified if there's a problem. And this doesn't happen, actually. As far as I know, this hasn't happened for quite a while that we've gotten an email. Uh, but when I want to contact those people, I just email backups at LA, uh, LADrupal.org, and they get the email, and they're like, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, cool. Everything's great. And uh, so here's the hourly schedule. Uh, these are rolling backups. I'm not sure why we still do that. But we can save, we can save more than six days' worth of, of you know, 24 backups a day. We can probably do that. So why don't we increase that to, to two weeks' worth? And I'm saving that. And now I can actually run this if I want to. So I just clicked on here. This is a little bit counterintuitive. So you can do a ton of things here. You can, you can select all these things from a global view and delete them. Or you can edit each one like I just did here. Or you can actually do a backup. And all these interfaces look a little bit similar, so it's like, well, wait, am I now configuring this backup, or am I now running this backup? So you just got to look at what the buttons say down at the bottom. So now I'm going to back it up. And it's backing up all the databases that we have. So some of these here, um, this was a domain that we used for Drupal Design Camp LA last year. Uh, I'm sorry, this year. But it turned out that design for Drupal.com was used by spammers, so we couldn't use that domain anymore. Uh, Joy, who uh, just walked out, was the one to report that. And I'm like, oh, no wonder our emails aren't getting to people. No wonder people are in, at the office and they're trying to go to the site and there's like, this site has been blocked on, on this network. So uh, we still have this for legacy reasons because we, we posted on Twitter and we posted on groups.org and sent out emails and stuff with the links to here. So these are just redirects. Um, Probably that actually access redirect. And then, so it's taking all of these database dumps. It probably saved them all to a temp directory. And now it is creating the timestamp directory in slash root slash Dropbox slash backup slash MySQL. And it's done. So if the campsite was a little slow right now, I apologize. It, it is using MySQL dump. It, it, is, it is locking all those tables and and just dumping all those databases. Um, that's that's the that, that's what this does. So now here is a full site backup. 
And this will save things into slash root, slash Dropbox, slash backup, slash everything. And it does this every morning at 2. We used to do it at midnight, but we noticed that the server got kind of slow around midnight, and that's when people are still up. That's when I'm still up. And so I can run a full site backup here if I wanted to. I'm not going to because that'll take about 45 minutes. And this is what that looks like. So here all the servers are being backed up. If I wanted to do only selected, I could select ddcla, ladrupal.org, and code.ladrupal.org. So I'm creating a new backup schedule and I could say include the subservers of those selected. So if I did that, it would also include uh, 2010.ddcla.org, 2011.ddcla.org, and I think we have a dev.ddcla.org. I guess we don't. Yeah. And is there anyone in the audience that has noticed that we didn't have a Drupal Design Camp LA in 2010? No? Yeah, it's because people actually started typing it in manually. They're like, wait, there's, I thought you were having a camp. But it was actually 2011. We did our planning in 2010, and the camp was in 2011. So it's very easy to create a, create a subserver and just put up a redirect. It's really easy. And just, just as it is in cPanel, creating a, a, what they call a parked domain. You can do that here. It's called a subserver. If you want to get really fancy, you can just do an a, a server alias. And I don't think we have any server aliases here. Yes? Um, I, when you were clicking through uh, a few minutes ago, I thought I saw that it can update itself too. Virtual Min and Webmin can update themselves. Virtual Min and Webmin can update themselves. Yes. So here, uh, or here, yes. So this is a web UI to, in this case, apt-get. And it's running apt-get update, apt-get upgrade. It's like, hey, so uh, these are the things that you can upgrade. And so instead of hitting, hitting the, the Y key, you click the install button. Uh, it, it's a little bit more abstracted than that, but it, it, that, that's for all intents and purposes that this is a UI to app get. So let me go to another, another, another server. Okay, so here I definitely want to install these. So I don't know what's new in the new webmin. User min is also, oh, okay, so get this. Virtual Min Incorporated is a company, and they hire, uh, or they, they, they work full-time on Virtual Min, but they also employ the guy that maintains Webmin. His name is Jamie. He's amazing. Oh, his name is Jamie. There, his name is Jamie. Right. There, there are separate people at this company. One guy is Jamie. He maintains Webmin. He also maintains Virtual Min. And then... There's Virtualmin, and then there's Cloudmin. Cloudmin is if you want to use a server to manage a, your virtualization software, whether it's Zen or VMware or OpenVZ. So, can you turn a server, can you partition a server into virtual machines from Cloudmin? Yes. So, can you turn it into Cloudmin? Or do you only manage it? Both. You can do both. Cloudmin sits on top of your virtualization software, so it will spin up instances. As, as you want. But that's Cloudmin. Then there's Linmin, which is, I don't know the relationship between Linmin and Virtualmin and Webmin and Usermin and Cloudmin. Linmin apparently has sponsored Webmin, and they're listed on the Webmin partners page. Okay, so there's, there's that connection. Linmin has something to do with bare metal server configuration. And then finally there's Usermin. Usermin is something I'm going to show you right now. It is uh, similar to logging in to Squirrel Mail or something like if you use if you have a cPanel account and you want to get your webmail, well, Usermin is the way to do it. You want to change your password, Usermin is the way to do it. Yes. Wow. So there's a little bit of overlap, but I'm not I'm not exactly sure how. So uh, Linmin uh, apparently does provisioning of, of Windows and VMware servers. So Usermin is, uh, let me go to one of these servers here. Um, how about this one? ladrupal.org. 
and I'm going to click on edit mail and FTP users so now I see the user list these are members of our community that have accounts uh, a lot of these are also just aliases or alternate spellings and uh, let's see so I'm here Christo uh, this is my actual mailbox username or my, my mail mailbox name you can see this is actually very similar to a shared hosting environment so I, I can have Christo at DrupalCampLA.com, Christo at LADrupal.org, Christo at DDCLA.org, but the way that the mail server keeps track of these different mailboxes is by appending the domain name. And Excellent choice. Thank you. I did that myself. And now you can log in. As, as a server administrator, you can log in, open some new window. You're going to see all my mail in a second. And it's running on port 20,000 instead of 10,000. And so here are all the, all the, uh, all my messages. I can change my password here. And this is what you would do if you were logging into user min as, as a user on the machine, not as a root user. The root user doesn't have to go through user min to do this. And I can set up my vacation message somewhere. Here's my account information. I can see an overview of what I can do, uh, how much space I'm using, what version of user min I'm using in case I want to uh, open a support ticket. So virtual min includes this for free. For every single site that it spins up, it will create, and for every user account that you have, you get a user min control panel with the barest of functions. Webmail, uh, I believe if you have an FTP account you can see how much space you're using. I, I, I don't use FTP at all. I use S FTP and SSH for everything. Um, and I personally don't like Pro FTPD. I think it's included only for convenience sake because a lot of a lot of people need FTP or they don't know what to do. And Pro FTPD supplies uh, virtual host configuration support, so it's included in virtual min. Uh, so I'm out of time. Uh, does anybody does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have a general question. Um, this is you know, great software. We really powerful software, but you know, from the understanding of this case, where uh, unless you have an actual host provider, you know, provide the actual host provider, then you know, it's going to be very difficult. There's so much, uh, I guess, knowledge public that you need. Mm -hmm. issues, all kinds of stuff that, you know, uh, I guess I'm coming from more of like a developer, you know, application. Okay. Data and stuff. You know, uh, why would I want to deal with this? You know? So the question is, why would I want to deal with this? I'm a developer. I'm not a hosting provider. Why Why would I go to this, to this extra effort of mm -hmm. using a control panel when I expose myself to more work and uh, security issues? Uh, my answer is that this actually lets you work in a different way. If you're comfortable logging in via the, the, the command line and editing configuration files using VI or Emacs or Pico or Vico or and, and you, you're comfortable with that environment, you don't have to use this. But if you would like a different way of doing it, if you want to have a more, a more visual approach or a more procedural approach, I'll click here that'll open this page, I can click on this tab, etc. This is that, that's that's one reason to use this. Another reason is that this will remind you if things are going wrong. Oh, there's an update available. Oh, there's uh, a backup that didn't run. This not only lets you perform those actions, it reminds you if those automatic tasks fail. So in my in my experience, this has this has taken my abilities to the next level. I went from being a developer and intermediate sysadmin to being a developer and being an intermediate sysadmin with a lot more power. <laughs> <laughs> now I can do more in less time. Right. So, okay, uh, along more from the beginning line, so, so I, I, I get it from the spin up a new Linux box, uh, virtual box, I can install webmin on it. Or virtual on it. Yes. And then if I choose to use the plugin, I can do that. 
What, what about an existing box that I've been using for a while? Are, are there any dangers to just spinning? I mean, obviously, I can clone my box to try it first. Mm -hmm. Put it on the last box. Mm -hmm. okay, yep. uh, are there any caveats I should be aware of if I'm like, hey, this looks great, I want to say yes, and then. Yes, yes. So the question is, uh, can I install this on an existing server? Are there any caveats to that uh, as opposed to, say, setting, setting up a bare server and then installing virtual mode? It is always fraught with problems, in my experience, to install webmin and virtual min on an existing server that has been running for a while, that has uh, virtual host configurations and or your, maybe your sites are are all in var dub dub dub. Um, I've always had a problem because virtual min will try its best to manage as much as possible but sometimes it'll see things that it just doesn't know how to deal with and if you use a virtual min installer then virtual min starts off with with a server stack that it, are, it already knows, it already expects. However it's incredibly easy to set up virtual min on a bare machine and migrate your stuff over it'll it'll even it'll even import cpanel backups so uh, for the drop lab site we had uh, droplabs.net on a, a host in Los Angeles it was free we were very happy until they decided to charge us more than what the market rate was and it took me literally 5 minutes to move that site from where it was hosted in Los Angeles to where it's hosted now in San Jose and it took five minutes mm -hmm. I used the backup here where is it so backup and restore so I, I backed up but instead of backing up to to a local file or directory I just save the backups on the server I was going to migrate to and then can you retrieve the backup from the server so you can migrate from it? yes okay. why actually it's not a backup because it would be a nice people down okay, oh, can, can you ask the question again uh, uh, so if I, I I'm not in cpan mm -hmm. but if I back up if I do a sql dump and you yes. can even you know, dump my core as well, mm -hmm. uh, I can use virtual me to SSH that server and grab that dump file, or grab the SQL file. <coughs> Is it better for me to just migrate? No, no. Uh, as far as I know, it doesn't do that. Uh, so, okay, so it's looking for a specific type of backup. Okay. Virtual min does not import raw files. That would be need to be done at that server level whether it's uh, moving the, the files, the code base, into the document root that virtualman has created, or uh, using MySQL to import from the command line or, or something like that. So, uh, no, virtualman will not go out and fetch raw files, but you can upload it from your browser. You can retrieve it from an S3 bucket if you're using virtualman pro. And here, um, you have to supply a virtual min backup. Yeah. And so what I did for Drop Labs website was I just imported this I I backed it up, but I sent it I, I didn't import it a virtual min backup. Yes. Oh, I exported it to the to the destination server. Ah, and then looked for that backup. Imported that on the destination server using this interface. Could you roll it the other way? Could you could you export onto your local server and then from the new server import yes. from the remote server? Yes, you can do that. And you can do that right here. So if I type in musclebeach.latriple.org and the file is in root, Dropbox, backups, everything. And I don't know, I don't know where where the actual backup is going to be. So I'll do, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I'll put in stevenator.tar.gz. Log in as well, in this case, because it's in root, I'll have to do it as root. And then I can say, okay, restore everything. Or just restore the, you know, the files and, and things that I want. And here's, here, this is an important point. If you don't understand these options, leave them alone. If you want to put this on a, a new IP address, 
For example, if you want to use an SSL certificate on this, on this particular virtual host, you type it in here. And if that IP address is already in your network configuration for the server, you say that's already active. And then you, it doesn't say restore, it says show what will be restored. And it gives you a readout of what was in that file. After it's retrieved it and decompresses it, it looks at the manifest and says, oh, okay, so this has this, 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 and this. Oh, and this. And it gives you the option of what to, of what to, uh, actually it doesn't give you the option. Here is the option of what to restore. But when you see it, when you click on show what will be restored, that's where it says what will be restored. And then you can opt to do that. So it li literally took five minutes to migrate a site from one server to another. Both were running Virtualman. Had nothing to do with Virtualman Pro or Vir Virtualman GPL. All I did was I changed my, my DNS and I was done. And I can't imagine doing that any faster in any other way. That used to take me an hour to do everything manually. Well, yeah, last, last with question. The, yeah, with the backup, one caveat I noticed is that if you don't use the MySQL databases that Virtualman creates for your sites, then it won't back up. Like, you know, it obviously won't back up the ones that you created. I don't know. Uh, or there's, I heard there's some way to tweak the config so that it actually will. I forget. I will show you how to do this. So under, under databases, you can import a database right here. There aren't any other databases. There aren't any other databases here for me to import. But if there was, I could I could import the. I'm not I'm not going to do that. Then that would actually do it, and it would put this database under this user, the LA Drupal user, and it would change the the authentication, the username and password for. Like all the all the grants and privileges for this database would be changed to LA Drupal, or they would, they would be updated. I'm sorry, they would be updated to let the LA Drupal user access so that database. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's. That'd be sweet. It, this has brought some sanity to my life. It means that I can do all the things I used to do, and actually spend my time developing in Drupal. Can you ask that again? How does it with ECS? On EC2? on EC two, um, it's fine. You can either install Virtualmin yourself using the the install script, or you can go to virtualmin.com and there's a there's a page there in the documentation for a um, a Virtualmin GPL AMI that you can use, or a Virtualmin Pro AMI that you can use. That's it. I don't remember what the documentation is. On, on the virtual page, it actually says that the pro version comes with EC2 scripts. If you purchase that license, and that installed really? on your Linux box, it comes with EC2 scripts for backing up to S3, comes with EC2 scripts for running uh, what's called a uh, snapshot uh, for EDS. Steve, can you give my presentation next year? <laughs> you know, I, I would love to because this session has made me feel dumber than any other session thus far. I mean, it's such basic stuff. I'm loving, loving it. I'm eating it all. That's what I like to hear. Okay, thank you very much, everybody.